to be here representing our government. We enjoy the wonderful relationship with partnership with Sun and Fun, and we are always grateful for that. And we're looking to see what else we can do and how we can further this relationship and continue to develop this relationship. But as the Consul General, I'm here to promote the Bahamas. I'm here to also provide service and also to protect the Havens. So it's multifaceted. We're similar to, our services are similar to our embassy. But we have four consulates within the United States. And one of them that, uh, that you reside in is the one in Miami, is that correct? correct? So you're the Council General for the, the Council in Miami. And where are the other consulates? We have one in Atlanta, one in New York, one in D.C. Yeah. And the whole U.S. is divided into four consulates. So we have other jurisdictions as well. I see. So you have us broken up into four uh, geographic districts. That's good. <laughs> well, that's good. And so you said your, your roles are to promote tourism, among other things. And so... I would imagine 2020 was a tough year for the Bahamas, uh, dependent on, in part on tourism. Uh, what kind of effects did, uh, did, the, did the government of the country see in, in 2020? Massive impact. I'm sure. 70% drop off, but thanks to our, our private pilots, they were a gift to us because when the commercial flights were not coming to the Bahamas, our private pilots continued to, to visit the Bahamas, support the Bahamas, and patronize us. And we are grateful for that. And we now even more recognize the importance of having that great relationship with our private pilots. So Sun and Fun is it's, it's a tremendous relationship for us. And we, are, we will be forever grateful for what you do and what you've done in the past and continue to do. And we are going to enjoy this week. And each year we're looking forward to new initiatives. And yes, it's, 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 it's just a great opportunity to work with you. Well, great. That's good to hear. And uh, so many private pilots uh, from around the United States often come to Florida and then use it, as I mentioned, as a point to launch uh, from um, the U.S. to the Bahamas and enjoy a wonderful time there and um, be part of their tourism industry. So there are a host of things to do in the Bahamas, some of which might include, what would you say? Besides sun and fun? <laughs> no, I mean in the Bahamas once, once we get there. Yeah. You, know, you, you can dive, you can um, have some of our good cuisine, enjoy our culture. Um, you can, if you're a boater, you can enjoy, also enjoy boating. If you're a pilot, you can do an island hop, see yeah. the different islands. Each island features a unique experience. So there's lots to do. And if you just want to chill, you know, we have lovely beaches. And if you're, so there's, there's, a, there's a lot that we can offer you. Indeed. I've had the pleasure of uh, traveling to the Bahamas by private airplane and on multiple occasions, and um, everything you said and more, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, speak more highly of what I found there, beautiful beaches, uh, doing island hopping in a small airplane there. It's just, that is just an incredible uh, opportunity to do that. Good fishing, good food, the culture, uh, really a way to relax and, and lay back. And so 
it's a wonderful place to vacation, and, and um, I'm sure more and more pilots will be doing that. Now that we're kind of on the final cusp of COVID, I hope, and we're all being vaccinated and, and uh, full of antibodies soon, we can travel more and more freely and, and the like. So, um, one of the things that uh, pilots uh, who are considering going to the Bahamas for the first time are concerned about is uh, how do I efficiently, safely, and legally get out of the country, get clearance to get into the Bahamas, and all the requisite paperwork and, and the like that um, is involved with that. And our, our next guest, seated next to Council General, is uh, Andy Ingram, who uh, has been working, among other things, on pre-clearance uh, activities for pilots who wish to fly to the Bahamas. And what a new partnership that you have. Is that uh, what you're going to tell us about, Andy? Absolutely, Ron. Thanks for having me, and it's great to be here at Sun and Fun. And we're excited about all the folks that are private aircraft. We wanted to make it easy as possible for them to come into the Bahamas by pre clearing at our local partnering facilities here in South Florida. Today we have two of our partners with us John over at Banyan and David over at Shelter Air, which also at this airport too. So the beauty about pre clearance, and we call it Bahamas Clip, that will allow private pilots to stop in, originate from Banyan or Shelter Banyan at Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport or Shelter at um, Fort Lauderdale International Airport and clear all the formalities including customs, immigration, um, a lot of the fees, all of the fees will be able to be paid there. There's no guesswork, there's no guessing as we've heard from your industry, how we make it easy to get to the Bahamas because it's a one stop shop. So, in the past, you would have to fly to an official port of entry, clear, and then go to your final destination. With pre-clearance, Bahamas clear, as it will be known, you'll be able to fly from point to point. If you go to Chubkey or Standard Key, if you're going to make a water landing, you can go directly to that point. And our partner that shelter there, um, who knows this business much better than I am, than I do, and I've been here. Um, can tell us a little bit about what pilots think and what they were looking for. David. Okay. And this is uh, David, uh, David Boritica from uh, Shelter, and uh, you're at uh, Fort Lauderdale. Okay. I'm actually based out of Orlando. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, I'm uh, working uh, out of Orlando. Uh, it just puts me up a place uh, to be a lot closer to the main bases that we have throughout Florida. Okay. And so you're at uh, which Orlando Airport? Orlando Executive. Okay. Good. I just haven't run into you there yet. I, I, uh, yeah. I go there frequently. Yeah, I know you for your next Eddie and uh, Sierra there at the front desk and several other folks, so uh, I'm sure we'll run into each other. But the, um, the, the clearance um, uh, opportunities that uh, Andy uh, spoke of a few moments ago are available at any shelter or primarily at Fort Lauderdale? Fort Lauderdale International. Fort Lauderdale International. Okay. So, okay. Uh, the Bahamas here and uh, by all of our other shelters uh, throughout uh, Florida. Our Bahamas Gateways, that means that uh, we are training our um, staff to understand what it takes to fly into the Bahamas and uh, make this process easier for pilots. Okay. Um, now, with uh, Fort Lauderdale International uh, having this facility where they're going to be able to put it here, um, this is going to make it so much easier. And um, inside our network, um, uh, we'll be able to offer uh, our tenants the ability to reposition their planes for free to uh, Fort Lauderdale International and having that easy access to Bahamas. Okay, good. And John Taco with uh, Banyan at Fort Lauderdale Executive, uh, a similar arrangement you have uh, there with the Bahamas? Uh, yes, um, we are also on a Bahamas Gateway FBO. We have since uh, the inclusion, I would say. Um, and, and again, we just, our, our business is to serve the customer and make it easy, right? Um, and we find that having our staff fully trained, having our pilot shop uh, right there to give that first time or the first time uh, pilot uh, access to life rentals, life passengers, life best rentals, rat rentals, etc. Um, it's really a win win. So, whether you're coming to executive or FLL, um, you know, you're going to be in good hands. Well, thank you. That's great. That's great. So, two uh, Bahamas gateways from uh, South Florida in the, in the Fort Lauderdale area, both in Fort Lauderdale Executive and Fort Lauderdale International. And this is a way uh, for you and I as uh, 
pilots from the U.S. flying to the Bahamas to make it really relatively easy to um, get into uh, the Bahamas by doing all the pre-clearance beforehand, paying the fees, and then departing the U.S. mainland and going to anywhere you want in the Bahamas, not having to go to an airport of entry like we've had to do in the past. Now, uh, Andy, this is a, a fairly new program, is it, that uh, you just instituted, or is it in place already? Very new. We test market the program. We had a very devastating hurricane recently, and we discovered that for people that wanted to help or getting goods and services into the, into the two affected regions, which was Abaco and Freeport, but all the infrastructure, all the airports, virtually destroyed or inoperable. We found that it was best for us to bring our officers, and when we talk about Claire, about Thomas Claire, you will have Bahamian officials, customs officers, that can answer all questions clear in you from these U.S. ports. And I should tell you that um, we discovered for the 16 months that we were operating that pilots really enjoyed it. The other thing we found very useful, it helped us to open up the real Bahamas. Most people think of the Bahamas so only as um, Freeport and Nassau, but we've got over 700 islands, thousands of um, open space, beautiful um, waters. And so we develop what we call runways in the sky. For those that are flying seaplanes, you can pre-clear at this facility. So once we saw the value of pre-clearing and listening to our partners, John and David, and talking to many private pilots, we discovered that this should be a permanent structure. Therefore, we started that process. We built out some great facilities at both locations. and. We're starting with Fort Lauderdale, um, we're looking at other locations based on traffic counts, but the two great facilities that we have do a lot of traffic, the Bahamas gateways, and this is the only, only the beginning for us. So interesting, it's like a great idea born out of the disaster of her Absolutely. What a, what a wonderful way of looking at a disaster of, of going beyond that and, and getting into something positive for uh, for your country for the uh, for the gateways and for pilots that are wanting to, to go to the Bahamas. Well, that's great. Well, Council General, if I may ask you, um, the uh, hurricane that uh, Andy referred to, Damien, I guess is what we're talking about. Dorian. Uh, Dorian, right, that Damien, Dorian. Got too many names in my head. Dorian, yeah. And that was in what year? September 2019. 2019. Uh, that followed by a pandemic the following year. And I mean, wow, it's just like a one-two. Punch. So, we want to talk a little bit about the pandemic and the terrible impact it had on the Bahamas. What about uh, the uh, hurricane and the aftermath of the hurricane? What uh, what did we see uh, as rebuilding? And uh, what did the Bahamas government do? And what did the U.S. do to help? Well, for the Bahamas government, it was a massive undertaking. Um, I mean, fortunately, it was not our capital, not not so which is in Providence. But Grand Bahama on the eastern side, and then most of central Abaco were impacted and devastated, I should say. Marsh Harbor, it was familiar with Abacos, and then Treasure Key had a lot of damage. And for us, fortunately, because of proximity and our great relationship with especially Southern Florida, there was a great response. You know, South Florida, because I'm living here, we were expecting Dorian. Yeah. So there were a lot of. Um, Preparation made here. A lot of supplies were already in South Florida, so, so, so the Floridians really activated quickly. So supplies, services, slash anyone with um, the Coast Guard. There was just a great response to our our need and our crisis, and so we are very grateful for the response. The recovery is coming along. COVID, of course, slowed it down, but we see things are starting to pick up. Tourism, tourists are coming in. Our protocols have helped. Um, most of our islands were not impacted by the, the storm, so we were always open for business. We remain open for business, and we see it, we see things turn around. So we are able to accept visitors on all of our islands. That's a wonderful success story. And relative to um, our recovery from COVID or our return to normalcy from COVID, what are the requirements now for um, uh, travelers to the islands of the Bahamas as far as COVID testing? 
more proof of vaccination? Are there specific requirements in place now? Yeah, our protocols are still in place with a five-day negative PCR test. So you have to enter the dumb PCR negative test. You have to upload it to a travel visa. There's a minimum cost, but it covers another test, which if a pilot or a guest to come in, they can use that same these are paying that was made to enter the promise and have another test done so there's no additional cost. Okay. So because now the U.S. is requiring international travel travelers to provide a test within 72 hours. So our visa also facilitates that. So there's a test a pilot has to uh, pass with a negative COVID prior to entering the Bahamas and then another one prior to returning to the U.S. Is that correct? If I remember... Correct me. Yeah. I, I think crews are exempted. Five days. Uh, crews exempted for the for the crews district for 24 hours. I think they're exempted. Okay, so minimum crews then are going to be there less than 24 hours. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Okay, and then if the pilot has uh, has already been vaccinated or past the pilot and passengers, if they've already been vaccinated, have proof of that, is there still required? Still required. Still okay. required. All right. So those are the protocols that are in place, and it's good to know what they are. And if you're uncertain of what it is, but you still want to go to the Bahamas, I'm sure there's a website that you can get to, or AOPA will give you all the information that you would need up to the minute protocols, because I'm sure they're going to change as, as time goes on. And this is great. So um, it's wonderful to, to learn all this info. Let me um, go back to you, John, and David, just a bit. So uh, when did um, your firms get interested in, in supporting the Bahamas in this gateway um, uh, opportunity. Uh, John, why don't you go first? Sure. Um, well, Banyan has worked with Bahamas tourism and with Greg Rule since like the late 90s, right? The gateway program initiated around 2006, 2007, in which Banyan and Sean there were first to join in. So, you know, it's been a good 15, 16 year run so far. And each year it keeps getting better and better. Um, you know, our, our, our teams can can really educate that pilot on, on where to go, what to do, how to get there, kind of relieve the stress of flying over water for maybe the first time. Um, yeah, that's of course a stressful thing for me. Yeah, that is the first time because if you've ever heard engines that would hit them, it's always while you're just uh, just beyond uh, landfall. Sure. And, and what I say, the hardest part about getting to the Bahamas is, is flying Florida. Once you get to Florida, you get to the Bahamas is easy. It is. It is. And you're mesmerized by the beauty of the Bahamas when you're flying over the various islands there that just, you know, just kind of erases all concern or whatever in, in life. Well, um, David, your uh, your role at uh, Shelter, did, um, did you... Uh, ask the, the Islands Bahamas for permission to do this gateway um, uh, opportunity, or did they come to you, or how did it work no, out? Well, it pretty much happened at the same time uh, with Betty and, um, uh, Betty and Shelter have been children of a partnership for many, many years, um, uh, over 30 plus years, I'd say. And um, with that said, you know, um, uh, when, when we were approached by the, uh, by the Bahamas and, and this started developing itself, it was something that was easy to spread to both of the EOs. Um, I think between Ben and Shelf here, we both uh, share a set of certain values and um, missions, and, and that involves, you know, how do we innovate uh, to be able to connect the world a little better. Uh, and uh, as those you know, that's, that's really what we're here for. So we're always trying to see what's the next, the next best, best thing to facilitate you know, the other programs for pilots to fight in the Bahamas uh, and to other places as well. But um, now with, you know, Bahamas clear, it's the next big step. Yeah, I think we covered the way to point. That's great. And Andy, if I may ask, uh, do you have any statistics on um, the number of pilots uh, increasing, decreasing, or about holding the same with the new Bahamas Clear program? Absolutely. Well, we look at potential. Yeah. And Florida being a market where you have a lot of pilots, you have a lot of aircraft owners, it's a natural um, opportunistic location for us to be in. Um, having back in a shelter who were gateway partners already, it became much easier for us to implement a program knowing the value that we can bring to the table. What we saw, um, quite frankly, during the hurricane is people being comfortable that we get customs sitting in the airport, um, getting them answering questions, clearing them all the way in. I'll be remiss if I didn't say how grateful the Bahamas um, is to the 
aviation community, particularly in Florida, and to these two gentlemen and their um, operations at Banyan and at Shelter Air. We had land centers that ran pretty much around the clock, getting people in and out, getting supplies in and out, and we saw the real value. So as we continue to expand Bahamas Clear, um, just having so many private pilots here, it's just a natural place for us to be. And we're with the partnership. That's great. That's great. One follow-on question, um, Andy. So you made it really easy now with with uh, Bahamas Clear to uh, launch to launch from uh, Fort Lauderdale, one of the two airports in Fort Lauderdale, to virtually anywhere in the Bahamas. What about the return? Is it as easy as well, or is it very very easy? So clear, we clear you in and out. By the way, so, so it's a it's a round trip, round trip, clear in and out um, from the Bahamas. The only stop is U.S. Customs once you clear into U.S. airspace. But that's the beauty of this program. There's no more. I mean, think about it. Previously, you had to make two additional stops going in and out. Today, it's just one stop straight to your destination. And any questions that you have is all answered before you depart the U.S. Well, what a wonderful opportunity. And uh, Council General Mackey, it's, it's wonderful that... Uh, you were able to institute this with, with your government and in conjunction with our government and with your two uh, partners at, uh, at Fort Lauderdale. This is just a, a great thing that hopefully will promote even more tourism and certainly going to make it easier for U.S. pilots to get to and from the Bahamas. This is great news indeed. One other quick point. Next year, we hope at this show, we'll be able to clear people directly from this airport going into the Bahamas. Is that, um, that's our goal. Listen to all these folks here. We'd love to get more of them. Either the previous to the show or post show the fly down, and we'll make sure that our customs officers are here to clear them out for both immigration and customs. Wow, what a great wow. opportunity! What a great opportunity! So, uh, if you're here at the show this year at the Sun and Fun Show, this is great, but even next year is going to be better because you can come here to Lakeland for the uh, Sun and Fun Show and then from here go directly to the Bahamas and leave from here. Non stop to your destination in the Bahamas. Any in the Bahamas, all 700 islands. Yeah, that's great. But okay, if you've got a seaplane, you got to run away to the ocean. <laughs> indeed, indeed. That's great. That's great. Well, um, thank you so much for coming. It's great to have had uh, each of you here. Uh, first of all, uh, John Taco from uh, from Fort Lauderdale, Banyan Air Services. Thank you for being with us and thank you for being a Gateway Airport. And uh, David Marudica uh, from Shelter. At, uh, at Orlando, but the gateway is uh, at uh, Fort Lauderdale International. It's good to have you. Andy Ingram from um, the, the Bahamas Clear. Bahamas Clear. Thank you. I forgot the right term. And finally, uh, Director General um, Ms. Mackey, thank you so much for being here. It's been wonderful to have you. And to learn more about the Bahamas and your opportunity to visit the Bahamas. You're a pi private pilot and you're interested in aviation. What better thing you can do is to travel in your airplane or someone that with you in another airplane to the Bahamas and see the beauty there and be one of their wonderful tourists. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Ron Timmermans with the Florida Aviation Network. It's been great to have you here. Stay tuned because in the next interview we're going to talk about flying cars. Yeah, flying cars. Do you have one? Do you want one? Have you ever thought about it? Stay tuned. You'll be hearing from the representative of Switchblade Flying Cars. Thank you for joining us.